I'm quickly talk about four things that you can add in to support your digestive health in menopause. My name's Tanya, and if you want to talk about midlife wellness beyond food, I'm here for it. So subscribe to the channel, comment on the videos, and let's hang out and talk. So the first thing is bone broth. Now look, I know bone broth is trendy. I did a podcast episode on the pros and cons of bone broth. To me, bone broth was always dinner. It was soup when I was younger. So trendy or not, you can't really knock the nourishment of bone broth. It's easy to make, you can buy it at the grocery store, and there's lots of minerals and hydration in it to support your gut. Do I have tons of PubMed studies on bone broth? No. <laughs> There's some out there. If you like that kind of thing and you find it soothing and nourishing, there's something so beautiful about a bowl of soup, you can still get a lot of nutrients in by adding in some stewed veggies, that's tip number two, into your bone broth for things that are easily digestible and easy on the gut. If you have gas and bloating from eating raw veggies, cooking them is fine. It helps you digest them. It helps you get used to more fiber. If that's what you're trying to add into your diet, don't be afraid to cook your veggies for easy digestion. Tip number three is using herbs. So you can add a lot of different herbs in to help your digestion, whether it is drinking them in a tea, using them in a tincture, or adding them in as powders to foods that you might eat. On my blog post, I talk about Slippery Elm, but I haven't updated it yet because when I did a podcast episode with Corrine from Spirea Herbs, we talked a lot about the sustainable harvesting of Slippery Elm. There's lots of other alternatives you could use as well. Things like licorice root, marshmallow root, all in the form of teas or tinctures. We also can't forget digestive enzymes and digestive bitters. Those are two of my favorite go-tos when it comes to menopause health with clients that I work with. I'm gonna link a favorite digestive bitter I use below every day and I love it. Number four is a supplement, glutamine. Now, not everybody should take supplements based off a YouTube video. You do have to assess your own unique situation, medications, other supplements you're taking as well. And some supplements can cause other things in the body. But glutamine has been a supplement that's studied in the literature to support your gut. It's an amino acid that's very abundant in the body and it helps the lining of the gut. Now, technically, you're not supposed to take singular amino acids. They all work together. Hence why this bone broth is supposed to work so beautifully for the gut because a lot of amino acids are included in the bone broth, which is an animal product which has the full profile of amino acids. Now that doesn't mean you can't drink vegetable broth either. There's a lot of minerals in plants. I love a good veggie broth too, and I make that in my slow cooker just like a bone broth. I said minerals, the type said amino acids. Yes, there's amino acids in veggies. There is so much controversy over what is best for us to eat. I just wanted to share a little bit of research. You gotta do you, boo. But glutamine is supposed to help with leaky gut. I think we're all familiar with leaky gut. If not, if you're new to this whole game, especially in menopause, pop a comment below. I'll make a leaky gut video for you. You can find some journal articles online talking about glutamine and its role in the gut. Some people do take this as a supplement, like anything. It should be based on your individuality, but there really is some striking research about how glutamine can support the gut, the intestine, and serve as like a little bit of food for your intestinal cells. Now, this is where some people might want to ask about the 4R approach to gut health. Are we not supposed to be removing things from our gut before we add things in? Again, this is so individual. I do have two things, one to limit, one to try and remove as best you can from your life. I know you're not going to want to hear it, but it's alcohol. You know, the whole girls night out thing. I know it's fun, but this does not help your gut. Now, I know that glass of wine can feel so soul fulfilling when you're out with your friends, you're connecting on a social level, that's really good for your health as well. But there is also the fact that wine does change your microbiome. Alcohol changes your microbiome. It also is a lot harder to metabolize as we get older. Our liver has to take care of all of the other toxins. There's all kinds of phases of toxification with the liver, it has to deal with the wine too. Your liver is so important in detoxifying estrogen in your body. So it's Something to think about removing if you feel like you have issues with your digestive system in menopause. As we age, so metabolizing alcohol can be a whole other thing when you're going through this hormonal shift and I bet you there's a lot of you out there that feel me on that one. That brings up the whole topic of marketing wine to women. Oh my gosh, is that not a thing? The second thing that I'd like to have you remove but you can't really remove because this is part of life, it's stress. So how can you build stress resilience? How can you mitigate stress in your life? What kind of coping strategies can you bring in to help you deal with all the things that get 
heaped on your shoulders in menopause? And what can you do to help your mood that might be really going up and down as these hormones are going up and down too? We can't remove stress, but we can try and add in coping strategies. And that might be meditation, exercise, walking, but it also might be eating a nourishing meal. The wellness world can really poo-poo on emotional eating, but sometimes it is a coping mechanism. When it becomes your only coping mechanism, that's where things can get imbalanced. There's so much to cover when we start talking about the digestive system, we barely scratched the surface. There are no end to foods and remedies that claim to fix your gut. And yes, some of them work. It's just that some are very restrictive and they can unearth disordered eating thoughts and thoughts about your body that honestly can amplify or are already amplified at this stage of life. Don't forget that practicing mindful eating is one of the best ways to get that nervous system out of a stress response and into a digestive phase. How else can we chat about our guts? Let's talk below. Now there's so many ways to work on your digestion. This definitely isn't a definitive list and every little thing has its own little nuance when it comes to you as an individual human.